Hi everyone, it's Duncan here from PJ Library. I am so excited to welcome PJ Library author Leslia Newman here to uh, have a virtual visit with us and answer a few questions. Welcome, Leslia. Thanks for having me. It is our pleasure. I the the first thing I want to talk about. I want to open this because I saw that um, among the many awards you have won, you're a very prolific writer. One of them is the is the Cat Writers Association Award. And you have several stories about cats, including PJ Library titles like uh, uh, Capsule the Cat Who Composed and Welcome in Elijah. Um, tell me a little bit about your love of cats. Is this part of what they say, write what you know? So um, I will show you the um, books that you mentioned because I think the artwork is so beautiful. So this is Welcoming Elijah, A Passover Tale with a Tail. It was just out for this past Passover. And here we have uh, Quetzal the Cat Who Composed with a very exciting cover because it's got all these lovely gold circles on it. And for Quetzal, I did win what is called, this is the Muse Medallion from the Cat Writers Association. But even more interesting than that is they had a special award, which I have right here, called the Literary Award, as in cat litter. So that, of course, has a, a prize, prime spot on my wall of fame. So, um, you know, write what you know is something that many, many um, writing instructors tell their students. I prefer write what you love. So that is something I tell my students and my teacher, the late, great Grace Paley, a wonderful Jewish short story writer, said to me, and I, I have to read it because it's, it's a little tongue twister. She said, write what you know you don't know about what you know. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say it again. It's hard to take in the first time. Write what you know you don't know about what you know. So to me, that means... Um, you, it, it opens up a feeling of exploration. So explore something that you want to know, you know something about, but you want to know more about, and you know there are many things about it that you don't know. So uh, that's kind of how I approach things. I am a cat lover. Unfortunately, you probably won't see my cat, Mitzi. She's a little camera shy. We've only had her for a month. Uh, but especially now with the world in such uh, turmoil, she has brought us tremendous joy. So it's, it's wonderful to have a cat in the house. Um, so the inspiration for welcoming Elijah, which you see features a uh, white cat. I had a beautiful white cat named Princess Sheba Darling, and we had her for 21 years, which is a really long time to have a beloved companion. Um, and she was towards the end of her life, and she sat on my lap the whole time I wrote this book, and I felt like it was her, her parting gift to me. That, that's amazing. I was going to ask if there was a specific inspiration for Welcoming Elijah, because I know that there was uh, there was a real Quetzal, right? And a real Gitzel from Gitzel's journey. Is that, is that right? So, yes. Yeah. So, um, Quetzal was owned by um, a composer named Moshe Kotel and his wife, Alia. And it's a, based on a true story, which is that one day he was um, practicing piano. And Quetzal, just for no apparent reason, ran down the keyboard. And Moshe, who must have been quite an interesting guy, just had this aha moment and scribbled down what he had heard, you know, in notations and sent it into a contest where it won an honorable mention. So that when I heard that, which I heard that story from my own rabbi who knew Professor Kotel, I thought that has got to be a children's book. So that was the inspiration for that. Now, um, where did I put Gittel? Here is Gittel's journey and Ellis Island story. So this is based on the journey that my Aunt Phyllis's mother took in the early 1900s from Eastern Europe, or what we call the old country, to America. Now here is a beautiful photo of my Aunt Phyllis, taken when she was 92. She is still 92 and still very much with us. And so she is the daughter of the real Gittel. So what happened was uh, Gittel, whose real name was Sadie, uh, I just changed her name for the story. Um, she was supposed to travel with an adult, but her, actually her um, aunt in the book is her mother. 
and um, she was turned away because she had an eye infection, which was pretty much the most common reason that uh, people were turned away from the ships. It was um, very contagious, caused blindness and uh, possibly death. So uh, Gittel, who was a young girl at the time, came along with a piece of paper in her hand that um, had the name of it, an address of a relative. And she was instructed, whatever you do, do not lose this piece of paper. So she held it so tightly that when she arrived, all the ink had worn off on her hand and they couldn't read it. So what was she going to do? You have to read the book to find out. Wow. Oh, I, thank you for the, the real life story behind it. Along the lines of writing what you know you don't know about what you know, are there, I, I think I got it right. Are there, Perfect. Are there any subjects, I need to remember that, are there subjects that you haven't tackled yet in books that you'd like to, or any projects coming up that you're able to share a little bit about? So I, I really can't think of anything I haven't written about that I want to write about. Um, the one book, kind of book I know I'll never write is a cookbook because I'm a lousy cook. My grandmother <laughs> was a wonderful cook, but I did not inherit that. Um, but, you know, I am known for tackling um, subjects that other writers shy away from. For example, um, this new book of mine, which is called Remembering Ethan, is about a little girl named Sarah. This is her cat Buttons. And Sarah's big brother, Ethan, has died. And her parents are so upset, of course, uh, that they can't e even mention his name because it, 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 they just can't. And this upsets Sarah. So she has a lot of agency in the story and she finds a way to help the whole family remember Ethan in a way that comforts all of them. And so the inspiration from, for this book came um, for, from several places. Many, many years ago, the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators published a list of topics that librarians wished they had books about in their library, and one was the death of a sibling, and I never forgot that. And then years later, a friend of mine had two children, and... Um, her daughter died and she said the, the hardest thing among so many hard things was coming home from the hospital and telling her son, your sister is not coming home. So that was the second thing. And then the third thing was, um, I'm uh, very close with um, Matthew Shepard's family, Judy and Dennis Shepard. Uh, Matthew Shepard was uh, murdered in 1998 for being gay. And I was um, in Wyoming when that happened as a speaker at his school. The long story about that, which I won't go into, but what has always uh, moved and inspired me is the way Judy Shepard constantly says her son's name, talks about her son, works diligently so that he will not be forgotten. And so I took that spirit of Judy and, and put it into this little girl, Sarah. These topics... So yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, the other topics, of course, that I'm known for are books about... Um, Two mom families, like Heather has two mommies, and books like um, Sparkle Boy that talk about um, gender expression in, in all different ways. And so, um, you know, I just don't shy away from topics that I think are important to talk about, especially with children. These topics are important and difficult, and difficult for even adults. So I'm wondering, what is it about picture books that makes this accessible and not only easier for children to process, but easier on the parents to help walk the children through these difficult topics. What is it about picture books that makes that possible? So, you know, many children love books. Um, I wish I could say all children love books, but it's probably not true. Um, books are very comforting books. And I'm, I mean like a a book book with a cover and paper and pages that you turn and you know versus a kindle especially with children it's a cozy time you know you often sit uh, on the adult's lap or very near to the adult and it's interactive the adult could read the child can turn the pages um, the child can point things out in the pictures there can be discussion so it's very it's a very quiet cozy time that's just very comforting and safe there's a feeling of safety and so you can bring up a difficult topic uh, during that time and and feel that you'll be taken care of one last thing, just wanted to check. I think it is, but is remembering Ethan available now? I imagine that it would be very helpful for a lot of families 
currently who may be experiencing loss, death in the family of some one way or another? Yes, so um, Remembering Ethan came out um, about uh, a month ago now, it's hard to keep track of time, as you know, um, you know, and which is just a wild coincidence because I started this book about 10 years ago. You know, the, many people don't know that the process of picture book from idea to actual book that you can put on a shelf can take a decade or even longer. It doesn't always take that long, but you know, you have to write it. That takes a while. And then uh, you have to find the perfect editor, which can take a while. Then the editor has to find the perfect illustrator, which can take a while. Then the illustrator has to do the illustrating, which can take a while. And then the book has to be manufactured. So it's, it can be a very long process. So, you know, it's very funny, not funny, funny, but you know, interesting that, that this came out while we're in the middle of a pandemic. A Gittles Journey, again, by sheer coincidence, came out when immigration was a huge topic in the news. So I, I seem to have my, my finger on the pulse. What can I say? <laughs> do you have a favorite spot where you, do you handwrite any notes? Do you type notes on your computer when you're working on ideas? So I still write everything with a pen in a spiral notebook. I've been doing that for really about 50 years now, or maybe even longer since I was 12 years old. So I feel like if it ain't broke, don't fix it, like my mom used to say. <laughs> and then what I used to do was type it up, but now I enter it, of course, into the computer, but then I print it out and I mark it up and then I type it up again and I'll go back and forth, oh, dozens of times until I feel like I got it right. Picture books I find are really difficult to write um, because every word really has to earn its space on the page. There is, there's no room for any word that isn't really um, holding its weight on the page. Leslie, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talk with you. PJ Library families love your books. Personally, I can say we love your books. With, I read them with my two kids. So thank you again for taking some time to visit with us virtually. It's a pleasure. And thank you to PJ Leber. I just wanted to point out that I was on the first trip to Israel with the PJ authors. So I, in honor of that, I wore my um, Jew, my Mogan David, which I bought in Israel on that trip. So oh, thank beautiful. you to the library for all your support um, uh, for your authors. It means a lot to us. Thank you so much, Lizia. Take care. Bye-bye.